Today, six titles at stake. Will Jackie Joyner break her own world heptathlon record? Can Edwin Moses stay king of the hurdlers? It could be one of the all-time great finals in the 400 metres hurdles. Everyone in this field is running to the peak of their form. Henry Amiki of Nigeria goes in lane one. Amadou Diabar of Senegal in two. Ed Moses, the world and Olympic champion and world record holder in lane three. Harold Schmidt, the top man in Europe from West Germany in lane four. Danny Harris, the 21-year-old, the pretender to Ed Moses' throne. He, the American, goes in lane five. Nylander of Sweden, an experienced man, taking part in his fifth major final in lane six. Great Britain's Chris Akabusi, what a marvellous achievement in his first ever season in the event to line up in this, the World Championship final, he in lane seven. And Jose Alonso, the Spaniard, who set a Spanish record in the semi-finals, is in lane eight. So can Ed Moses, the greatest champion in the history of this event, prove that he is still the world's number one? He runs in lane three. Chris Akabusi, his achievement is simply being here, but he says, they've got two arms and two legs like me, I'm running for a medal. He is in lane seven. Ed Moses, the greatest ever, but has he faced a race with pressure like this, with two men in Schmidt and Harris, apparently in better form at the moment than he is? Moses has gone off with a storming first 100 meters and is up to the shoulder of Schmidt. Harris looking good too, but remember the West German comes on strong in the latter half of this race. Chris Akabusi running very well for Britain too, out there in lane seven. And he's just behind the big three in the middle. Moses nearest to the inside of the track. Harris in the center. Schmidt between the two of them. Akabusi's fourth or fifth. Moses is in front. Schmidt is coming back at him. Harris is looking good too. Moses over the final hurdle. What a finish this is. Can Moses hold on for victory? Yes. A fantastic race. And Ed Moses is still the greatest. 47.48. Harris came at him at the finish. But for my money, Ed Moses just got there. It was a fabulous race. Chris Akabusi, we made in about sixth or seventh place, but as I said before the race, his achievement was in making the company of the eight champions in the World Championship final. Well, this is going to live in the memory of probably the greatest hurdles race ever. Moses with a clear lead here, Steve Ovet, but how the young man Harris nearest to the camera came back at him. Absolutely unbelievable. Really. These, these two, Schmidt and Harris, are really tracking Ed down, but give, give it to Ed, really. I think, oh, it's so close there, isn't it? I think Ed literally gets it on, the, on a, a short neck, as it were. You can see the two blue vests going across the line. They're almost together, Alan. I suppose Ed thinks he's got it, but I don't know, 100%. I don't think even he can be sure, but uh, he's doing an Apavon, and I think he knows he's probably got it. Well, it's the first time Ed Moses has ever figured in a photo finish, and that says something in itself for Harris's performance, doesn't it? Look at the strain on his face. He wanted to stay champion badly. Harris getting strong as the line approached. Moses getting weaker. Schmidt between the two of them, the bronze medalist, that much is for sure. Agonizing. He was prepared to hurt himself to hold on to the title of champion of the world. That's Schmidt's head just coming into the picture there. 
the bronze medalist. And no wonder they call this the man-killer event. Just look at the agony on their faces as Harris just out of the camera shot at the moment. Wanted the gold as badly as Ed Moses did. Well, in his 13 years of international racing and over 130 races, no victory has ever come so tough but so sweet for Edwin Moses. His time, 47.46, a new championship record. In second place, Danny Harris and Harold Schmidt in third place shared 47.48. That's the second fastest time ever recorded, and for Schmidt, equals his European record. And Sven Nylander in fourth gets a new Swedish record. The women's 200 metres, the first heat with Angela Bailey of Canada on the inside, Stuart Ogan Koya in four, Gwen Torrance, the World Student Games champion, going off fast, Natalia German from the Soviet Union, Artiga of Bolivia, Jaro of Gambia, and Gladish of East Germany. On the outside, Gladish, the winner of the 100 metres, obviously determined to lead home in the 200, go for the double. She's ahead of Gwen Torrance of the United States. Torrance, who won the World Student Games a month ago. But Gladish is on tremendous form at the moment. Her winning time, 22.44, ahead of Torrance, 22.61. It's a good time for the second heat to aim at with Georgieva to watch from Bulgaria on the inside. The Russian Ikanitsi going well in lane three. Morgan Stern of the DDR in six. But in lane seven, Pam Marshall of the United States looks very strong. The American champion, stronger over 200 than 100, but Georgieva holding her form on the inside. And it'll be the Bulgarian who's a finalist in the 100 meters to qualify for the semi-finals in 22.77. Running into a slight breeze, so the time is slightly slow. Marshall was second, 22.84. Heat three of the women's 200 metres. Pauline Davis of the Bahamas in two. And in five, Marie-Christine Kazia of France. In six, Eva Kasperczyk of Poland. Marion Yali of Nigeria. Marion Yali, world student at Games medalist. Fine runner, and it looks like... Uh, Mary Yali there, very close between her and Kasperczyk. Mary Yali giving it in 22.87, ahead of Kasperczyk, 22.98. Heat four, and it brings together two old antagonists. In lane four, Merle Notti of Jamaica, the Commonwealth record holder, who was third in the Olympic Games. The girl who beat her, Florence Griffith, of the United States, running in lane five and wearing the superwoman suit. Always noted for her rare fashion visits to the track. It'll be Florence Griffiths to win very easily from Hazard Ashvili of the Soviet Union with Merle Notti taking the third qualifying place. But all eyes are on Florence Griffith and that sensational suit that she's wearing. Nobody noticed her time, which was very fast, 22.56, ahead of the Russian 22.94, and Otti qualifying 23.19. So to the men's 200 metres, look for Carol of Cuba in two. Krilov of the Soviet Union, one of their specialist 200 metre runners, Flying there in lane five is Sangumara of France, and outside him, the favorite in this heat, it's Floyd Hurd of the United States. He's run 19.95 this year, which makes him the second fastest in the world. And it looks like Hurd is going to take it easily from Krilov, and in third place, Istvan Naj, the number two Hungarian. The winning time there for Floyd Hurd, 20.56, Krilov, 20.79. Calvin Smith, who the other day, the opening day of these World Championships, saw his world record for the 100 metres taken by Ben Johnson, now lines up in lane three in the second quarter final of the 200 metres. On Smith's outside, all in red, is the Commonwealth champion, Atli Mahorn. But the reason for the deafening noise is the appearance of Tilly, the Italian, extreme left, all in blue. But Calvin Smith has run a superb bend. He leads from Ackley Mahon, the Canadian. Also going well in the centre. But it's been a storming win by Calvin Smith. A legal following win, but Calvin Smith's time, 20.38. Very impressive. Mayhorn, 20.64. Regis ran well here this morning. Expressed himself reasonably pleased with his run, but knows he's going to run harder and quicker still here today. Fedorov of the Soviet Union, second from left, run a very good first 50 metres or so. But John Regis, with the rest of them very, very evenly placed behind him, leads them all. Spearman of the United States coming on strong, and Kenneth Hervey, the Frenchman, on the inside. Regis eased up and got third place behind the American and the Frenchman. 
Currently a very good time for Kenneherbe, 20.48.